701, we will call the Planning Commission meeting to order. We'd like to welcome you to the February 27th, 2024 meeting of the City Planning Commission. Before we begin, I will outline the procedure that we will follow for our public hearing. As each agenda item is called, the applicant or his or her representatives and persons for their request will be allowed to speak. Then persons against their request will be allowed to speak. If there is opposition to the request, the applicant will be allowed to make a short rebuttal. All persons wishing to speak need to come to the microphone at the front of the room. Please state your name and address for the record. All statements made should be relevant to the agenda item and be limited to three minutes. If there are several people in the favor or opposed to a request, we encourage you to allow one or two people to act as spokesperson for the group. If you like, a spokesperson for a group may request that the group stand to be recognized. While public discord is very important to the commission, we have to maintain order in the meeting so that all persons may be heard and city business may be conducted. If so directed by me, the Sergeant at Arms shall remove from this meeting any person while addressing the commission or while attending the commission meeting that makes personal, impertinent, or slanderous remarks, becomes boisterous, makes unauthorized remarks from the audience, stomping a feet, whistles, yells, or similar demonstrations. The commission members have reviewed each of these items in a previous work session. The recommendations we make tonight to the City Council will be based on the work session and the information provided by staff as well as any additional information presented tonight. After completing the hearing on each item, the Commission will consider action on the item. The action taken tonight on all items, excluding plats, will be in the form of a recommendation to City Council. City Council will also conduct a hearing on all items, excluding plats. This will be held on Tuesday, March 19, 2024 in the Bosky Theater of the Waco Convention Center, 100 Washington Avenue. The record and recommendation of the Planning Commission and new testimony will be considered by the Council at that time. The first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes of our January 23rd, 2024 work session and business meeting. Are there any changes or additions? Seeing none, they stand approved as written. First item we will hear tonight is on subdivisions. City staff, what is y'all's recommendation? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Uh, this is a public hearing on the final plat of the Jackson Farm Edition, Lot 1, Block 1, and then a variance request to the requirement for City of Waco water extension uh, per the Waco subdivision ordinance uh, for the proposed subdivision entitled Final Plat of the Jackson Farm Edition, Lot 1, Block 1. Uh, we'll take the variance request first um, and then the plat. Uh, staff does recommend approval of the variance request concerning the uh, subdivision and the waterline extension of lot one block one of the jackson farm addition uh, be approved in accordance with section 7.1001 of the subdivision ordinance uh, based on the following findings and condition uh, that extra extraordinary hardships or significant practical difficulties may result from the strict compliance with the subdivision ordinance regulations and the effect of the variance will not be detrimental to public safety health, welfare, or injuries to other property, uh, and that the conditions upon uh, which the request for the variance is base, based upon are unique to the subdivision under consideration and not generally applicable to other properties. Uh, the one condition we have is uh, further subdivision, the remainder of the tract uh, that requires plotting will require the extension of the public water main to serve the new subdivision. Is the applicant or his or her representative here to speak on behalf of this item? Would anyone like to speak in opposition to this item? Do we have any questions from the commission? We will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Uh, I move that we approve the variance based on staff findings. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Smith and a second by Mr. Vickers. Uh, city staff, please pull the commission. Embry? Yes. Ingram? Yes. Lane? Yes. Salami? Yes. Smith? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Cole? Yes. For item Z-24-5, what is city staff's recommendation? M Mr. Chair, we need to act on the plat as well separately. Uh, and staff does recommend approval of the plat. Got it. Okay, is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of this item? Anyone that would like to speak in opposition? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. I move that we approve the plat based on staff findings. Second. Motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Vickers. Please pull the commission. Ember? Yes. Ingram? Yes. Lane? Yes. Salami? Yes. Smith? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Cole? 
Now for Z-24-5, what is city staff's recommendation? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public hearing on a request by Teresa James of CPNY Inc. DBA STV Infrastructure on behalf of Alliance Syndicate 2, property described as being a 1.294 acre tract of land situated in the Lewis Marble Survey, abstract number 580, McLennan County, Texas, and being a portion of that called 9.776 acre tract of land described in deed to Alliance Syndicate 1 LLC as recorded in a McLennan County Clerk's file number 20100-26383 of the official public records of McLennan County, Texas, and located at the northeast corner of the Panther Way and Ritchie Road intersection. This is a two-part request. The first part is to amend the land use plan from suburban residential to mixed use flex, and the second part is to rezone the property from R1B to C2. Planning services mailed out 13 notices and had one comment returned in opposition. Uh, today, the City of Waco did receive a request from the applicant to withdraw this land use and rezoning request, and staff is recommending the withdrawal of this request. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of this item? Anyone would like to speak in opposition? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Motion, Staff withdrawal? Second. We have a motion from Mr. Embry, a second from Mr. Ingram. City staff, please pull the... Commission. Embry? Yes. Ingram? Yes. Lane? Yes. Salami? Yes. Smith? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Cole? Yes. For item Z-24-6, I will recuse myself from acting on behalf of this item, but will continue running the proceedings. What is city staff's recommendation? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public hearing on a request from Corey Dickman on behalf of Brazos River Capital 1201 Webster LLC for the properties described as Lot 3, Block 60, Campbell Edition, known as a portion <coughs> of 1211 Webster Avenue, and Lots 4, 5, 6, and 7, Block 60, Campbell Edition, known as 419 South 11th Street, to rezone from M2 to C4. Planning services mailed out 22 notices and had zero returned. Planning services recommends approval of this request to change the zoning from M2 to C4 based on the following findings. One, the proposed zoning is in conformance with the land use component of the comprehensive plan and the Imagine Waco, a plan for greater downtown. Two, the existing public infrastructure is adequate to provide for uses allowed in the C4 zoning district. Three, the area has been transitioning from industrial uses to commercial mixed uses over the last several decades. And four, C4 zoning is becoming the dominant zoning along this section of Webster Avenue. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of this item? Can you just state your name and address for the my record? My name is Jessica Lopez. I'm at 1119 Webster Avenue, and this is uh, my neighbor John. He's at 1113 Webster Avenue. Uh, we just had some questions and concerns about the, the zoning. I'm aware of the Imagine Waco plan as far as like the rezoning that's going to be inevitable to that takes place. However, it's still a residential area, um, and uh, John has a, um, a shop there next door to me. And the guy, Wayne, who works there also lives there. So uh, as residents, and I've, I'm speaking for my neighbors, the, Lo the other Lopez's who are unrelated to me next door, um, we're just concerned about the parking because <coughs> people are parking in our driveways. They're parking in Wayne's driveway, thinking that it's a closed business and no one's there, but Wayne comes and goes from his driveway all night long. Um, if he has to pick up a vehicle or something like that. And um, previously, this lot was being used for a sports, you know, you know, the sports were going and being played there, which is perfectly fine. But, you know, people just pull up and park and have no concern for whose driveway they're blocking and what have you. So our concerns were these, and we want these questions answered or, or concerns addressed is are, are we going to increase our property taxes or are we going to is that going to increase our property tax period uh, number two what times uh, will the food trucks be uh, operating is there going to be alcohol served 
that brings a special type of person or people who come, they're hungry, they're drunk, they want to get their buzz off. And we have all heard about what happened at the taco stand on LaSalle. So we don't want that going on right around, right next door to us. Um, if alcohol is going to be served, we already deal with a lot of speeding going down Webster from the overspill from everybody having a good time that night at Putters in downtown. They're dangerously going fast, almost hitting curves because they're all obviously drunk. So that's our concern. Um, our, you know, um, another concern is how long are they going to be open? Um, we thought we had a good rapport with Corey, and Corey didn't talk to us about what you know, his plans were there. So we kind of want to know what the plans are because Wayne lives, you know, at that structure on Webster. And I'm coming and going. Um, I have a tenant who lives in the back. And, you know, just with food trucks, it just brings a lot more foot traffic. And we're down for, you know, keeping up with the changes. But, you know, don't disregard us, you know, because we're not uh, commercial. We're, we're still residents there. So, um, if they're going to do a food truck, I would like to know how they're going to have those positioned as residents. We would like to know where they're going to be facing, where cars are going to be parking. Is there going to be designated parking? Is there going to be um, porta potties? Is it going to be fenced in? Is there going to be security there? Because we just we have the projects right down the street, and I'm sorry, but there's so much going on in that area. So it, it's a beautiful thing what we're doing downtown, but we still need to address safety. So. Um, those were our questions and concerns. Uh, also, let me see if I said anything else. Yeah, music. If music is going to be going on down there, what, what times, which falls in the hours and operations of what they're doing. My name is John Patrick. I'm at 112 Webster. And uh, the, the biggest concern is we don't know exactly what the plan is, what she stated. So without details, how would we say, yes, this, this is all right to do in our community? Um, she is speaking on behalf of two residents, side by side, this property, and across the street there's residents. So it's not like it's commercial. There is people living there in this area, and uh, it's just uh, without knowing more about it, I don't know how you get more information. Uh, do y'all have more information? So we don't have uh, details on the specific intended use of the piece of land. This is just uh, meant to be a proceeding to rezone the piece of property, which then can be used for anything defined as an acceptable use in the new zoning. So what we were told, or I guess uh, what Jessica was hearing is that that it's the reason for rezoning is so they can have uh, food trucks there during the week instead of the weekend. I'm not sure of the details there. And the other issue is uh, that uh, the fact that uh, the food uh, court, I guess they're talking about a food court. And if that's if, if they're talking about a food court where there's multiple food trucks, I mean, the whole reason for a food truck is because it's mobile. And there's food, uh, food courts all over Waco, so you don't necessarily need another one. But we just don't have any details on it. And I don't know how to go about getting details, except we could have asked, uh, I guess, Corey, but I just found out about this, so it just was sprung on us. City staff, do you have any details? Yeah, so the, the rezoning to C4, currently it's industrial zoning. And then the, the C4 zoning does allow a mix of commercial uh, and residential uses. Um, I would say specifically to uh, food trucks or open air vending, those do require a license. Uh, and part of the licensing process, they have to get all uh, the residential owners within 200 feet to sign off on the license. So that would be something they ha would have to come to all the residents within 200 feet to show their plans before they could get a license for uh, food truck operation. So you sound like you know something about the food business. No, I, they, have, they have not. I'm just saying what the rules are for if for any food trucks in the city. We, they, this rezoning um, would is not specific to a certain use, and we have not been approached about a food truck at the site. 
to so, date. So that's my general question is, yeah. what is the reason for the rezoning? Well, I, I think it, as that area has been transitioning um, away from industrial uses, um, it, it's in line with uh, other properties in the area that have been rezoned from M2 to C4 uh, to accommodate uh, more uh, commercial retail development in that area instead of uh, industrial development. I would agree if, if there wasn't residents in that area. I mean, directly next door to them, and there's several residents, I mean, across the street, so there's not that much. Uh, the, the light industrial was the core incorporated that was there before, and they have sold out, and now this group has come in and bought the land. So there really isn't any industrial there, so, you know, even that's a, a, a jump, so to speak. But again, if you didn't have residents, it probably would be a different deal. But you got people living there directly next door to it. And that's and without knowing the, the overall plans for the future for this, you know, you're saying rezoning and, and I tried to get it some information before I came here about what this classification was. I got a little bit of information, but I still don't know what the plan is for them to yeah, the, 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 uh, C4 is our downtown zoning, so it allows uh, restaurants, retail, multifamily, uh, you know, the retail commercial uses that you see downtown. Um, and currently, even though this is zoned for industrial, it's not a lot that has anything. Th these lots don't have anything on it for industrial the, use. Is that correct? It, correct. It's, it's vacant land. It, there build, oh, it used to be a building there, and it was demolished. Yeah. So uh, that's basically it. Yeah, uh, I don't have. A, I, I do have a renter there, and and his concern is, you know, it, she stated some questions. I guess legally, you're supposed to not be open past two. I don't even know the Waco laws. Uh, but if they had food trucks, could they stay open until four in the morning? Well, it sounds like from what the city is saying that if someone wanted to operate a food truck on that premises, there would need to be a special license granted, and then we could deal with the hours of operation. In theory, as a condition with that license, is that correct? With the the actual license requires any uh, homeowner within 200 feet to actually sign off on it. So, so yeah. I don't know if Corey's here. But, uh, Sir, are you within 200 feet of that? Yes. yes. Okay, so he would have to work with you or for licensing. You would have to get permission or buy in. So you do have a buy right. So last thing, and I'll leave at this because I'm probably past my time, but uh, I called several groups, appraisal, uh, zoning, several departments, and I tried to find the general answer could the taxes go up? And the general answer I got, appraisal sent me to a planning, planning sent me back to appraisal. So I made the rounds. And the general answer is, we can't tell you what's gonna happen. And that's a concern. We're all concerned about taxes, you know. And so uh, that's our. Staff, do you know, Clint, is there a direct correlation with the zoning? I mean, property taxes, it's a, it's a complex formula of what's going on around you. And improvements and all sorts of things. Do you, are you aware of any direct correlation with zoning in the value? Not, not in in our experience. The zoning by itself does not create the value. It's what's developed on the property, um, and and then what are comps to that? Um, you know, the appraisal district's looking at. You know, when they're appraising a, a property, they'll look at comparables to that so just being next to something um, that's been rezoned or developed doesn't automatically increase your property it takes it all into it um, and I, I again it's one of those things it, it is hard I mean all property values are going up so but rezoning by itself is not going to create uh, that be a single fat factor for something that could uh -huh. increase on taxes I did get a response like that. So I'll leave with this. I think the major concern is the safety for the residents. And that's it. Thank you. And Clint, one more thing. Um, 
we're not no one's talking about a food truck park here that's not what the application is for but if it were that or any other development in c4 that's permitted by right typically a parking plan or parking lot is also submitted into planning and not just random street parking and parking on your neighbors uh including for a food truck park is that correct sir correct correct yeah and i do want to be clear uh, most most of the permitted uses in c4 do not require that um you know that you have to get permission from the neighbors with the 200 feet that's that is specific to an open air vending permit to the food truck so you know if they if they built a, a restaurant there in a building that would not require approval from the neighbors it, it is specific to food truck parks that would require that extra and what level. are the rules on alcohol at a food truck c uh c4 does allow alcohol sales um there are some requirements tabc requirements on how that's done but um you know, for example, the the uh, the food court on Lasalle Route 77, it it has alcohol sales there. So you no, know, if TABC require has a public hearing and a forum, there there is a process they go through as well. Yeah. <clears throat> like to speak for or against this item? Do we have any more comments or questions from the commission? I have a procedural question just to make sure something I just thought of. If we have one of our commissioners that recuses themselves, we still have enough votes for a quorum at our current number? Okay. I just wanted to make sure. That was, that was all I had. Yeah, quick question for the um, city as well. Any issues around the safety? I know concerns about speeding and whatnot or any things that we should be aware of in that area. Just to address the safety. Um, no, and, and again, to keep in mind that this property is actually being, I call it upzoned. You're going from a more intense use of industrial that allows more heavy uses on the property to a C4, which is a more restrictive zoning district for the uses. Thank you. And, and also to that it's um, actually bringing the property into conformance with our comprehensive plan as well. So we we have the the city did just do a project on Webster uh, that put some more um, sidewalk lighting in that corridor, uh, added some more on street parking, um, and narrowed the lanes down to try to uh, you know make that safer through that corridor. Um, you know, and a, as this property would develop, you would have the same type of treatment there you'd have the, the wider sidewalk street lights um, that would be part of the development plans on that thank you okay we will now close the public hearing and entertain a motion I have one, I have one question. Yeah, okay we'll reopen the public hearing yeah so I'm just wondering how has everybody um, appointed their position on the board by our city council folks, or city, council? city council folks appoints us. It's just a concern because I see some familiar faces on this panel who have tried to solicit uh, buying our property. So I don't understand how that would be a fair vote moving forward on anything going on in that area. Well, I mean, our, our in-house council is here. If there's conflicts of interest, we have to disclose that and sign a piece of paper. And I have recused myself from the vote. Okay. Yeah. And, and I would like to, Mr. Chair, also um, advise everybody as well that this is only a recommendation. The actual vote for this item takes place at the city council. And that meeting will take place on March 19th, I believe. So this is a recommending body, not a decision-making body. We were told Yeah, city council has the ultimate decision on this the the recommendation uh, from plan commission um, is one of the things they consider they also look at staff's recommendation and also you know testimony from the public too but ultimately they have the final decision 
It's a learning curve. Sure, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Um, I move that we recommend approval based on staff findings. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Smith and a second from Mr. Embry. Please poll the commission. Embry? Yes. Ingram? Yes. Lane? Yes. Salami? Yes. Smith? Yes. Vickers? Yes. On item Z-24-7, what is city staff's recommendation? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public hearing on a request from Andrew Bourgeois CTX Development Group on behalf of North Paul Partners, LLC, for properties addressed as 1111, 1117, and 1121 North 5th Street. The request is for special permit for dwelling small lot single family in an R12 zoning district. Planning Services mailed out 37 notices and had one return in support from Brook Oaks Neighborhood Association. Planning Services recommends approval of the special permit subject to the special provisions and conditions and based on the following findings. One, that the proposed use is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Two, that the proposed use is compatible with the appropriate and orderly development of the area in which it is located. Three, that the proposed use would not be more objectionable to neighboring properties because of traffic congestion, noise, fumes, vibrations, or any other characteristics than any use permitted in the zoning district without the grant of spe a special exception. Four, that the available community facilities and services, including the road system providing access to the proposed use, are adequate for the proposed use. The above findings are required for the granting of a special permit as per section 28-122 of the City of Waco Zoning Ordinance. Staff recommends the provisions and conditions noted under the following section of this report. Special provisions and conditions for dwelling, small lot, single family. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of this item? Is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition of this item? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Motion to recommend approval based on staff findings. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Embry and a second by Mr. Lane. Please pull the commission. Embry? Yes. Ingram? Yes. Lane? Yes. Salami? Yes. Smith? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Cole? Yes. For item Z-24-8, what is city staff's recommendation? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public hearing on a request from Mary Hageny for property addressed as 2228 Sanger Avenue for a short-term rental type one in an R1B zoning district. The request is for a special permit for, I'm sorry, for, oh, I already said that, STR, short-term rental type one in an R1B zoning district. Planning services mailed out 40 notices and had zero comments returned. Today, um, planning services, we did receive a request from the applicant for continuance of the public hearing to the March 26, 2024 plan commission meeting and planning services does recommend approval of the continuance to allow her time to work some things out. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of this item? Anyone in opposition? Hearing none, we will leave the public hearing open and entertain a motion. Move for a uh, continuance on this item in accordance with the city staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Lane, a second by Mr. Embry. Please pull the commission. Embry? Yes. Ingram? Yes. Lane? Yes. Salami? Yes. Smith? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Cole? Yes. For abandonment item ABD-23-14, what is city staff's recommendation? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public hearing request from Andrew Boudreaux of CTX Development on behalf of Wagbu Properties, LLC, for the abandonment of a 0.27-acre tract to South 10th Street right away, adjacent to lots 1 through 7, Block B, the JW Mann's edition. Uh, address is 1001 Webster Avenue, and describes the 0.27 acres of land in the city of Waco, McLennan County, Texas, being a part of South 10th Street, as shown in the J.W. Mann's addition to the City of Waco, McLennan County, Texas, as per plat recorded in volume 28, uh, page 243, the deed records in McLennan County, Texas. Uh, we mailed out uh, eight notices on, the, on this one, had two returned, 
uh, one uh, requesting that it uh, be continued. Uh, Planning Services does recommend approval of the abandonment request based on the following findings and conditions. Uh, findings that the portion of the abandoned right away uh, outside of the proposed uh, fire access easement is not needed uh, for the proper flow uh, or traffic uh, or for emergency vehicle access to the area or adjacent properties. Two, that utility access for surrounding properties is not adversely impacted by the abandonment of the right away. And three, the abandonment provides for better development opportunities for the property, properties oriented towards Webster Avenue and South 11th Street. Uh, we do have two conditions. The first one is to provide a 13-foot fire access easement uh, from the center line of the street to within the abandoned portion of the right-of-way. Uh, a 26-foot marked fire lane must be provided within the easement in the remaining South 10th uh, Street right-of-way. Uh, and then provide one of the following for the existing water line uh, that's located in South 10th Street. Uh, one would be to retain a 20-foot uh, water line easement centered on the existing public water line in South 10th Street. A 10-foot water line easement must also be retained connecting the 20-foot uh, water line easement in the remaining portion of South 10th Street uh, right away. Uh, option two would be to relocate the public water line with a 20-foot water line easement centered on the relocated public water line. And then option three would be to abandon the existing public water line subject to the City of Waco uh, line abandonment requirements. Uh, option three does require uh, written approval from the property owner at 408 South 10th Street, uh, which is the Geyser Ice House building property. Thank you. Is there anyone that would like to speak on behalf of this item? Taylor Allen, 400 Garland. I do serve on the Planning Commission, but I am here tonight just as a citizen. And um, thank you, Clint, for sharing all of that. We do understand the complexities of this, but we're excited about our development there. Abandoning 10th Street is key to access along there. We have a market hall in the back that's gonna, um, people, folks can walk down it and walk into our, our hall there. 10th Street does terminate into Jackson, into the railroad, so it just makes sense to have Festival Street, and um, we're really excited about it and here to answer any questions. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak on behalf of this item? Anyone that would like to speak in opposition of this item? Bill Wetterman with 23951 North I-35 West Texas. I'm, I am the adjacent property owner. Um, we've got a proposed development there uh, that we have had several conversations with this development group over the past several months and coordinating between the two developments. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts to those discussions, a lot of issues, a lot of which have been addressed by the city and have been agreed upon, but we're not we're not there yet, so I've got a conditional objection and would like to see this issue tabled for at least 30 days to allow us to um, reach a resolution on access agreements and, and just other pieces. The, for instance, the water line, the three options that Clint just, just shared with you on the water line, that was just information that was presented today. We haven't had time to digest which of the three options would work best, how it's gonna impact costs, logistics, timing, um, we've got the entire city block from 9th to 10th that is going to be developed into a pretty substantial uh, mixed-use development that we're pretty committed to. We're excited about the project that WAGBA is doing with theirs. We're in support of it. It's just, it's just a timing issue. Thank you. Mr. Wedeman, it seems like, based on what I've heard from the city staff, that they're confident that regardless of what you do, assuming it goes through, you'll be covered and taken care of. Is that not your position? You, you don't think that's true? Well, the, 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 si the size and scope of our project and the back of house, the service and delivery, you know, the fire lane is an issue. Um, we need a cross access agreement executed with the adjacent property to allow our traffic and our back of house and service and delivery to travel down Jackson and exit on the 11th Street so they don't have to come down 10th. If for some reason we weren't able, and I don't anticipate that to be the case, but if for some reason we weren't able to execute a cross access agreement to 11th Street down the band in Jackson, then we would need 10th Street for our service and delivery access. 
um, the water line, the proposed improvements that both groups have been discussing conceptually, you know, the location of the water line, the potential that, that our project's probably going to demand an eight inch water loop down 10th, down Jackson, down 9th, um, which as y'all are aware, 9th Street's been abandoned, so that's now a private drive also. Um, you know, there's just all these different issues that need to be resolved, and our position is it's smarter and better to get it resolved before the fact than after the fact, although the timing of their project is more critical than ours. Ours is gonna be a few months down the road and behind, behind theirs, but um, there's just concerns that I think in the next 30 days we could probably resolve them. Um, many, of, many of which have already been resolved, but like I said, just the recommendation on the water line, we weren't even a party to that conversation until today the three options that were laid out, we didn't know that's what staff's recommendation was going to be. We haven't met with Public Works and with the Water Department on how to address, you know, that water line, water line relocation, private versus public. Um, you know, again, it, it's, it's a conditional objection. We have no objection. In fact, we're going to be coming back and asking for an abandonment if we can get these other issues resolved on our side of 10th Street. But we're not that at that point yet. <coughs> Any other questions for Mr. Wedderin? Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on behalf of this item? Hearing none, we will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Uh, I move that we approve based on staff findings. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Smith and a second by Mr. Vickers. Please pull the commission. Embry? Yes. Ingram? Yes. Lane? Yes. Sloan? Yes. Smith? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Cole? Yes. Uh, our, our next and last item is an ordinance amendment. City staff, what is your recommendation? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public hearing to solicit public input on a proposed ordinance amendment to Chapter 28 Zoning of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Waco, Texas, Section 28-929, for the purpose of establishing criteria for fence construction, including height, installation, and maintenance standards. Staff would like to hear from anyone with comments regarding this matter um, so that we can take those into consideration in drafting an ordinance. Do we have anyone present that would like to provide comments? Hearing none, we will close the public hearing. There's no action to be taken on this tonight, so we will adjourn the Planning Commission. Thank you.